General Mills, thank you for coming so far to see us. Um, could you start by giving us a little bit of a background into the Australian Army's priorities uh, as it comes to its uh, recapitalisation efforts in terms of uh, armoured vehicle fleet? Uh, thanks very much for the question. Um, last year, the Australian Government released the uh, 2016 Australian Defence White Paper in response to security challenges that we see played out on our screens and on our, uh, our computer screens around the world uh, in terms of conflict in the Middle East and security threats both within Europe and closer to the Australian region. Uh, as a result of that white paper, um, our Army has the opportunity to recapitalise a range of capabilities. Uh, important and relevant to this uh, conference is our armoured vehicle fleets. Um, as a result, over the next 10 years, the Australian Army will replace its ageing M113 and uh, Australian Light Armoured Vehicle fleets of equipment, um, upgrade our uh, M1 tank capability uh, and introduce an Under Armour breaching and bridging capability uh, that will improve the mobility of, of our combined armed teams. Collectively, these projects represent more than $40 billion in acquisition over the next decade uh, and collectively will ensure that the Australian Army can provide a very broad range of robust response options to the Australian Government. What can you tell us about the activities of the industry in terms of your, your interplay, your relationship with them as you progress these projects? Uh, well, um, last year, as a result of, of a very significant um, first principles review of defence, uh, the Australian Defence Force restructured itself to ensure that we were better able to follow through on, on the government's funding over the next, um, next 20 years to realise these capabilities. Some of the key features of, of, uh, of that review was the requirement for a far deeper um, uh, partnership with industry uh, based on a foundation of, of, uh, of understanding and trust and I think that partnership between industry and defence represents uh, the key opportunity to realise the potential of, uh, of the investment over the coming decade. Of course Project Land 400 is of keen interest here among the international audience uh, as you said, a huge amount of money involved in that uh, and, and effort. Um, what can you tell us about the lessons that you're picking up from that project and indeed any related projects within uh, the Land Vehicles uh, program to date? Well, in terms of uh, Land 400 itself, it's broken up into um, three real capital acquisition phases. Uh, phase two is about replacing our ageing ASLAV fleet uh, and delivering approximately 225 cavalry reconnaissance vehicles. Uh, currently, two world-leading com companies have been selected for uh, participation in an a up to 12-month trial period, uh, and uh, two world-class capabilities that will be put through their tests. Based on uh, that uh, testing, um, options will be presented to government and then government will decide. Uh, I'm sure if either one is selected, uh, the Australian Defence Force will have a world-leading cavalry reconnaissance capability. Um, shortly thereafter, the Phase 2 capability, Land 400 Phase 3, is about replacing our ageing M113 vehicle uh, with an infantry fighting vehicle. Um, an infantry fighting vehicle is a new capability to the Australian Defence Force. Uh, so understanding the requirements, what other user nations are doing, uh, and in particular the pace of technological change will be uh, key in, in us solidifying our requirements that will go out to market in, um, in the coming years. In terms of when we're likely to see these capabilities realised in the Australian Army, we're looking for an initial operating um, capability for Land 400 Phase 2 in the 2021-2022 timeframe uh, and for Land 400 Phase 3 with approximately 400 infantry fighting vehicles and a quantity of manoeuvre support vehicles we're looking for a period uh, in the, the time frame of 2025-2026. Although that seems a fair way away uh, a lot of work needs to get done between now and then to realise those capabilities. Hopefully the IV event is helping you in some way to achieve those aims. What can you tell me about the value this event brings for your effort? Oh, absolutely. Well, it brings a whole 
bunch of experience from across the, gro the globe uh, into one location with the opportunity to discuss um, the key challenges, problems and opportunities. Um, the threats that face most of the nations represented at this conference are far greater than any one of us to be able to deal with successfully. Um, the key to success in the future is, uh, is in coalitions, collaboration, uh, to ensure that we get the best capabilities and collectively we can meet the threats that exist today and those that will exist in the future. It's a great opportunity. Um, yeah, very good. It's an honour to have you here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.